I did not like that book because it was not like the childhood movie that I watched in the 80s over and over and over again. And this is so controversial. Box. I did my bit of bum. <laughs> Hi, my name is Leilani and I'm gonna share with you some books that we loved and some books that weren't really worth the time that we spent reading them. B books that we, we didn't, we didn't really like. D doesn't mean that they're bad, it just we didn't, I'm gonna give you reasons why I didn't really like them and reasons why we absolutely loved them. This is a collaboration with Katie over at Life in the Mundane and I love her to death. She is a great resource channel. Her link is in the description box below as well as a playlist with my other friends that also have some really good homeschooling books, reading books, the, they, we just read a lot. We read a lot. Let me now share with you the books that we have read this year, the ones that work, the ones that don't. All right, the first book series I'm gonna mention, it, well, it is a series, it's called The Green Ember Series. Do you wanna guess if I loved it or hated it? They loved it. <laughs> I, I couldn't get into it, but all three of my older kids loved it. So one thing that my kids really love about series is it gets really, really in depth, okay? And these rabbits, they're, they're rabbits. They're like kind of human rabbits with personalities. King rabbits and queen princess rabbits and all. It's almost like kind of like Lord of the Rings, but not quite to that level. I would say upper elementary, middle school age. It's a pretty thick book, but it's very intricate. My kids loved it. And a, and a bonus to the Green Ember series is that it was written by a Christian author. So there are some really good Christian morals that come alongside this book. And you know it's safe to read because they're not gonna include anything inappropriate. Now I know some of you guys know that book that's a pretty popular one, and this one is also a pretty popular one, but we did not, we didn't like it. <laughs> At least I didn't like it. It was Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. Now you're gonna find some people love the book. So I personally did not like that book because it was not like the childhood movie that I watched in the 80s over and over and over again. And I was, I was totally expecting that even though somewhere in the back of my mind somebody did tell me it wasn't the same. The biggest difference I want to say with the Rats and Nim versus the movie Rats and Nim is that there is, you know, science experiments involved with the rats. I'll just leave it at that. And there's a lot of time spent talking about those science experiments and quite frankly, I didn't like that. It kind of made me a little nauseous, if that makes any sense. Probably because I don't like animals getting experiments on. And I, I get the point that they were trying to make, but I didn't like the book. The next book that I'm gonna mention was a tie. This is my favorite. Tie between another one. I'm gonna wait to give you that last one, actually. But it's a tie. I love this book. Love this book. Oh, if you ever decide to read a book that discusses slavery, this is the one. It's called Never Caught, The Story of Ona Judge. Guys! It's so good. It's so good. It just really gave us such a different perspective on slavery and what she went through. And it even discussed some of those points that you hear. For, for example, it brings up the fact that some of the slave owners would talk about how they treated their slaves so wonderful. What slave wouldn't, what slave would want to run, run away from an owner that feeds them and clothes them and even gives them an opportunity to go out there and make some extra money selling, you know, extra scraps of food here and there. What slave would ever want to run away from that? And so many slaves were treated so well. You ever hear that rumor? Well, this book actually addresses it and talks about why freedom for many, many slaves was way more important than that. You see, Ona Judge, she was the slave of George and Martha Washington, and she ran away. So if you were to think that a slave had it good, you would think that George Washington was the first president, so he probably would have been a really good slave owner. There's a lot of that discussed in the book. <laughs> And it, there is a lot of controversial things in that book that are brought up that are that are really good to discuss with your kids. Like there was a statement in there that said, does freedom end racism? And that's a great topic to discuss with your kids. You know, what happened to slaves when they ran away? What happened to their, their families when they ran away? It talks about the different slave laws in the different states and, and how George Washington actually found a loophole in how to keep his slaves from from becoming free. 
when they lived in, in Philadelphia, for example. We actually did read another book about George Washington this year. This is on my uh, books that I didn't necessarily like. That's because this one was a pretty intensive read and I did feel it was a little bit slanted. Now I'm not saying George Washington was a horrible man at all, he, but he was a man. And when any book kind of creates a amazing hero-like person and, and they don't tend to bring out some of the flaws that that person may, may have had, I, I sometimes see that as a problem. And this was the Sowers series. And that was my experience with the George Washington book as well as the Abigail Adams book. And this is so controversial. Don't know why I'm getting into controversy here. Definitely, definitely put George Washington, slavery, the whole time period really made you see both sides of the story. It's just, it was so good, so good. Now I do wanna take a step back and go back to the Sower series. Sowers, S-O-W-E-R-S. I did read two of the books. I haven't read all of their books, to be honest. This is the Abigail Adams book right here that we read. And just to give you an idea, it is a, from a Christian perspective, which when it comes to history is not, in my opinion, not always, not always the best because it is slanted. I like, once again, I like primary sources and I like to hear it from the person. And sometimes it's good to get like a Christian perspective and maybe the opposite perspective or just two opposing perspectives that you read. I haven't read all of the Sower series books, so there might be some that are really, really good out there, but the Abigail Adams one, this one I just, it I didn't feel like it was a clean read as in not like inappropriate content, but clean read as in like, it didn't flow well. It was a difficult read for me and my kids. The George Washington one was a little bit easier, but like I said, at the end, they did make him out to be an amazing hero. Even brought up the fact that he released his slaves at the end of his life, but there is more to that story when you read On a Judge. And actually I did some more research on my own about the whole releasing of the slaves at the end of his life. Yes, he was conflicted with his views on it. People are so complicated. It's so complicated. But it, it really, like I said, sheds light on all of that. Just so, such a good book. I also liked Own a Judge because it really sparked us to do some more research on that subject. At least me, my son's sitting right here. Hi. Did you enjoy reading that book? Yeah. Yeah, it was a good book. Did we learn a lot from it? Yes. Yeah. We did. Let's just get away from controversy right now and get back to going into that fantasy world that is just so much fun to go because you just forget about a lot of things and just jump into fantasy world, right? I think this was my son's favorite book and it was Peter Nibble and his fantastic eyes. So I did not know about this book. I was trying to find books about kids that had disabilities because as many of you know, my youngest daughter has Down syndrome and I wanted to be kind of exposed to some of those books. So I accidentally put it on my Scribd as one save that we would listen in the future and we pulled that book out, you know, kind of just because it looked cool and sounded cool and it was so good. What was your favorite book? My second part? favorite book so Se far. Second favorite. And he reads a lot, guys. Like, he Except we listened to it on audio. We did listen to audiobook and so that totally counts. So I didn't get counts. to read it every five minutes. Oh yeah, he had to wait until we were doing car trips, which, I mean, the car trip would be like, we sit in the car, put our seatbelt on, and he'd be like, fantastic guys, fantastic guys, fantastic guys, fantastic guys. <laughs> So Fantastic Eyes, Peter Nimble and His Fantastic Eyes is about a boy who is an orphan and he is blind. But somehow he comes across a man that says, I have an amazing adventure, kind of like the Matrix. You either do it or you don't. Red pill or blue pill kind of thing. We know and which one he, he takes. And he stumbles upon a box. So. A dead <laughs> Eggs. Anyway, he gets like fantastic eyes. It's in the title. And they do things like We can't ah, tell you. Tell. Okay, okay, we can't tell you. He said that we can't tell you. We can't tell you. Alright, here's a book that we didn't like. It's not a bad book. It just was kinda like eh. It was called Adventures with Waffles. I don't even remember I don't even remember what it's about. <laughs> he wants to say, come on. Only a quarter of a quarter of the book had waffles in it. But, yeah, okay. <laughs> It was more about the friendship of two people. That's honestly all I remember. It was just an eh book. I, I'm wondering, I, I feel bad because I think Katie from Life in the Mundane actually recommended that book and it just didn't, it didn't, it didn't work with us. 
Another book that was kind of disappointing to us, sort of, I don't know, this book gave me the creep factor. It was just, however, I will never forget this book. So, there, it's called The Simple Art of Flying, okay? Oh, I hate that book. If you're familiar with the book, The One and Only Ivan, it's a monkey, and we live through the eyes of a monkey, and that's a really good book. It's worth your time, better than the movie, better than the movie. But this one was about a bird, a parrot, and we kind of go through the eyes of a parrot, and the parrot is the one telling the story. Um, it's a boy and a relationship with an elderly lady. <laughs> a friendship. I will leave it at that. But I don't think, it, I think it was meant seriously to be a friendship. I didn't, did I fall asleep listening to that book? Yeah. Oh. We were napping. We decided... <laughs> that tells you how much that book we impacted napping. our lives. We were napping. Moving on. <laughs> a book that I think we really enjoyed reading. It's a short read. It, I think it took us, it was like an, like it was scribbed and it was audio. I think it was almost two hours. Maybe, I don't know. Don't quote me on that. The Invention of Hugo Cabret. Hey, it took place in France. I'm going to roll my R, do like the French, I don't know. French accent. It's steampunk. It's not like the movie. Don't don't watch the movie. Just read the book. I don't even know where I heard about this book from. I've never really been into steampunk before with my kids. Oh, I loved it. And then the kids have been doing like the Kiwi Com uh, Co. What is it? The Kiwi Co. Tinker Crates and stuff like that with the gears. And, and it was funny because they got a box like the next month and it referred to the invention of Hugo Cabret. And oh, it was just a fun book because they find this doll. It was like a mannequin doll and they just try, were trying to figure out how it worked and there was a key and they did, yeah, it was good. Steampunk. It was a, uh... Steampunk. <laughs> okay, a book that we didn't like. This actually was my daughter. She didn't like this book, so um, I'm just going to show it to you. <laughs> do, you know, do you know why she didn't like this book? Yeah, so here's the thing. My sister loved Pippi Longstocking. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna get Pippi Longstocking for my daughter. Pippi Longstocking's kind of a tomboy. My daughter starts reading it and she gets through, how far did she get? She got like this far. <laughs> and this is not just one Pippi Longstocking book. It's three of them, okay? So she got that far reading it and then she just said to me, mom, I don't wanna read this book anymore. I was like, why? She's like, the girl lies way too much. And she's just not a good person. So this book, we stopped reading it. I'm probably going to get rid of it. All right, I'm just gonna go through. My son really, really wanted to share with you. I'm gonna show you some books that he likes. Bring them on, bring them on, just go, bring them on. How I Became a Spy, go. They deciphered stuff. They deciphered <laughs> stuff. And it took place during the Nazi era. Good book. Usually I don't like books like that, but that one was a different exception. Uh, this is a series of books that I purchased on discount. Didn't even know what they were about, but apparently both of my boys fell in love with this series. One sentence, go. They had to go to space and collect seven elements. So they have to go to outer space, it's outer space book, sci-fi. What, what were the elements <laughs> for? Is that, is uh, that a create, spoiler? To create a source. Okay, okay. Is that powers the world? And that's not a spoiler! Yeah, more, but there's a whole series. How and high does it go? you can't find the rest because I, I devoured them. There's six. Them. There's six books total. Ooh, that These one. books. Usborne books. I never got to read that one. The science one. But you read this one. I read the food one. There's about ten of these. And my kids <sighs> literally, legit, fall asleep with these on their bed. They have fun facts, like tsunamis can be as tall as a skyscraper. And that lightning's hotter than the surface of the sun. All right, we got a bunch of Ted Decker books. This is the uh, dragon. Why do you well, like it? Well, there's a nuclear war because of religion. So they had to go up to space to go away from all the radiation. And then once the glaciers melted, dragon eggs hatched. And then the okay, freeze, freeze, freeze. Really How far fire. did you? Did you give a spoiler? No. Okay, it's a Christian this. author, by the way. It is a religious war, right? Yeah, there was a religious war, and, and then there's dragons. Had, and then there was a nuclear religious war, so they had to wait for all the radiation to go away and everything to. Spoiler <laughs> alert and stop! <laughs> These are the Dream Traveler's Quest. So it's a quest to find the five seals of truth. Hey, that's the spoilers. What? Yes. Darn it. No, it says so on the back of the book. It's not a spoiler. <laughs> upper, upper elementary, middle school. Uh, this is gonna be more high school, okay? 
uh, The Secret Air, and uh, I read it. Good book, because I know the people who wrote it. It definitely has elements of fantasy in it, and it, a lot of character development in this book, so. There you go. And all of the girls who wrote it are Christians. So go ahead and check out the playlist in the description box below so you can start filling up your Amazon carts with lots and lots of books that, yeah. Or library, you could you could put reserved. Library, the library. is a lot cheaper because Or $10. get scribbed and save them and do it as audiobooks. So those are just some ideas out there. I hope you have fun, happy reading this year. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Bye.